Welcome to Talking Money with Nozi, personal finance made simple. Today, I'm going to be talking about common tax-free savings account mistakes, aka TFSA mistakes that people make. And hopefully, watching this video will help you to avoid making these mistakes in the future. First of all, what is a tax-free savings account or TFSA? A tax-free savings account is a special type of account that was introduced in South Africa by National Treasury in 2015. There are three different types of tax-free savings accounts. The first type of TFSA is a cash-based bank account. These are the tax-free savings accounts that you get from your banks like APSA, Standard Bank, FNB, etc. And personally, I don't like cash-based tax-free savings accounts. The second type of TFSA is one which allows you to invest in unit trusts. You deposit money Money into your TFSA account, then your money is used to buy unit trusts. You get these types of tax-free savings accounts from asset managers like Allen Gray, Coronation, Stanlib, etc. Unit trusts are better than cash, but I also don't like them. The third type of tax-free savings account is one which allows you to invest in exchange-traded funds, also known as ETFs, that are sold on the stock market. This is my favorite type of tax-free savings account, and I use my Easy Equities TFSA to buy ETFs. And guys, please note that you are allowed to transfer money from one TFSA into another TFSA, but please make sure that it is a transfer not a withdrawal. So the money doesn't come into your bank account first, then into another institution, but it's directly from one institution into another institution. For example, I used to have a cash only TFSA with African Bank in 2018. Then when I saw the light, I decided to ask African Bank to transfer the cash from their TFSA into my Easy Equities TFSA. And then I used the cash to invest in ETFs. Please understand that a TFSA is very different from a normal savings account. Otherwise, there'll be nothing special about it, right? Here's what makes a TFSA special. Number one, you can only deposit a maximum of 36,000 Rand between 1 March of one year and 28 February the following year. If you deposit 6,000 Rand this month, for example, your remaining annual limit drops to 30,000 Rand. If you deposit 6,000 Rand next month, your remaining annual limit drops to 24,000 Rand and so on. Secondly, the maximum contribution limit in your lifetime is 500,000 Rand. Once you reach 500,000 Rand in deposits, you can no longer add any more money into your tax-free savings account. And if you are blessed enough to be able to deposit 36,000 Rand annually, you're going to reach your lifetime limit after 13 years and eight months. Please note that the 36,000 Rand annual limit and the 500,000 Rand lifetime limit cannot be renewed once it is used up. And I think this is the point that many people don't seem to understand. For example, let's say I deposit the maximum 36,000 Rand into my TFSA this month, and then I decide to withdraw all of it next month. Maybe I have an emergency and I need the money and I take all of it out. I will not be able to replace that 36,000 Rand this year because I've already used up my limits. I need to wait until next year, the 1st of March. Only then will I be allowed to deposit into my tax-free savings account again. Another thing is, not only do your deposits affect your annual limit, they also affect your lifetime limit. So for example, if you deposit 10,000 Rand into your TFSA today, your remaining annual limit drops to 26,000 Rand and your lifetime limit drops to 490,000 Rand. That's why you should not use your TFSA as a normal savings account or a transaction account because they don't work the same. What are the benefits of a tax-free savings account? The first benefit is that there is no tax on all South African dividends and any interest that you earn inside of your TFSA. The second benefit is that there is no capital gains tax when you sell any of your investments that are in your TFSA. So if you've got ETFs in your TFSA and you sell them later, there's no tax on that. If you've got unit trusts 
in your TFSA and you sell them later, there is no tax on that. You will only enjoy the full benefits of using a TFSA if you invest for the long term, not if you use it for the short term. Now that I've explained what a TFSA is and how it works, let's look at the common mistakes that people make with their tax-free savings accounts. The first mistake is not your fault, but I think the name of the account is a mistake. I don't know why they called it a tax-free savings account because it gives the wrong impression and I think that's why people act as if it's a normal savings account. Words matter, words convey a particular message, a particular meaning, so if you call this account a savings account, people are like, yeah, it's for saving most. So why can't I save and then take the money out? So it's not your fault. They should have called it a tax-free investing account. And I think people would treat it differently. The second mistake is when you, now this mistake is on you, ne? is when you deposit money into your Easy Equities tax-free savings account, for example, or your Stash app, for example. And yes, guys, a lot of people don't know Stash is actually a TFSA. It's a tax-free savings account. The mistake is that people deposit money into their TFSA accounts, into their Stash apps, but they don't buy anything. They just leave the money as cash. After depositing your money into your TFSA or Stash, you must invest your money by buying ETFs or unit trusts. So there mustn't be cash sitting there. It must buy something. That's how you invest. So a lot of people think that once they've deposited the money, then it's invested. No, 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 no. You deposit it, then you buy something. And that something can be a unit trust or an ETF. Let me show you with my tax-free savings account what I mean by you need to invest the cash and not just leave it sitting there. So let me log into my Easy Equities. Okay, so in Easy Equities, you've got several different accounts, right? There's the Easy Equities ZA account, there's the TFSA, that's your tax free savings account. And another thing that I want to clear up, guys, the TFSA is an account, it is not an investment. It's a type of an account. People get confused. They say, is an ETF a TFSA? And I'm like, no, 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 no. An ETF is an investment. The TFSA is an account. So think of a TFSA as a house. And the ETFs are the furniture that you put inside of the house. So here we go. I've got cash at the moment. This money needs to be invested so while it's sitting here as cash as 170 rand and 15 cents this is not invested for me to invest i need to buy the furniture which is etfs because in your tfsa you can buy etfs unit trusts etc but i prefer etfs so i'm going to invest in the satrix 40 the top 40 which is that basket of South Africa's 40 biggest companies. So click on top 40 and I'm going to buy with that 170. So 170 and I'm going to choose the second option, place by order. And that's how you invest. So now it says funds to invest 000. zero, zero. So I have invested the cash. The whole point why you should buy ETFs or unit trust is to grow your money above inflation. Cash does not grow above inflation. That's why you can't just leave your money there as cash. If you have a cash-based TFSA, it's time to make a move. It's time to transfer to a provider that has got ETFs or unit trusts. Personally, I'm not saying it's a recommendation. Personally, I use the TFSA on Easy Equities. So once you open your account with Easy Equities, you already have a tax-free account. Then what you can do, transfer from the cash-based into Easy Equities. And when the cash is now on your Easy Equities TFSA, you don't leave it they're looking at you you have to buy either buy the etfs or the unit trusts but personally i like ETFs. what a break what a break the third mistake 
is using your TFSA, even your stash. Remember I said stash is also a TFSA. The mistake is using it as a short-term savings account and you're depositing and withdrawing money. You're putting money this month, you're taking it out, you're putting it in. Actually, I shouldn't call this one a mistake. I'm going to call it a crime. Remember, I've already said that any money that you deposit into your TFSA cannot be replaced. Your deposits reduce your annual as well as your lifetime limits and these limits cannot be renewed ever and if you deposit more than 36,000 rand per year into your tax-free savings account your extra deposits are taxed at 40 percent let's use the example that i used in the beginning if i put in 36,000 rand this month i've already used up the deposit limit and then i take it out because of emergencies i go and pay whatever they don't care that you took it out they only care that when for this year you've already put in 36,000 rand. After that, you took it out to be sure they don't care. And if you come back with extra money on top of what you already put in, you're going to be penalized. The fourth mistake, or rather, should I say crime, is using your children's tax free savings account and then withdrawing the money. Yo, this one is the worst of all because you are destroying your children's lifetime tax-free savings allocation so first when you've destroyed yours it's not enough until you've destroyed yours ne? now you want to destroy your children's tax-free allocation why for what purpose so it means when they are now adults they won't be able to use their tax-free savings account because when you were putting money there for december for toys for emergencies or whatever it is it's not fair guys does it mean you must not use your children's tax-free savings account? You can, only if you're not going to touch that money. If you're going to give it to them as a gift, like a starter pack in life, like I'm giving it to you as your starter pack for your own long-term investments in the future, and I expect this money to grow long-term, no touch, etc. that's fine. But if you're going to use the kids' tax-free account for school shoes and school uniform and toys, I know, guys, no. If you want to save money, don't use a tax-free savings account. Use a normal savings account. Then you can withdraw and deposit how many times you want. There are no penalties there. But in a tax-free savings account, guys, there are those limits and those penalties don't disadvantage your children for no reason. So some people argue that the reason why they use their tax-free savings account for short-term savings is because they're trying to run away from taxes. Né? And I think it's a lack of understanding of how taxes on interest actually works because you are not going to pay tax in a normal savings account if your interest that you earn annually is less than 23000 800 rand and for you to earn more than 23,800 it means you've saved a lot of money think of it this way ne? your tax-free savings account only allows you to deposit 36,000 rand let's say I've got 36,000 rand and I want to save it for short term if you put it in your tax-free savings account you've used up the limit if you take it out you won't be able to put it back again so that's a disadvantage but if you save the 36,000 rand in a normal savings account you're not going to pay taxes because the interest on 36,000 rand is so little. So why are you destroying the TFSA limits when you could just simply use a normal account and not pay tax anyway? So you're not going to pay tax. Okay, if you don't understand, I'm going to do a spreadsheet for you to make it more clear. In this spreadsheet, I'm going to show you how much money you actually need to have saved in your normal savings account for you to start paying taxes. And remember I said, for you to start paying tax on interest, the interest that you earn annually must be more than 23,800 rand. That's when you start paying tax. So in this table, I show the annual interest rate. This will be the interest rate from your savings account. So whether it's FNB, APSA, African Bank, etc. Then amount saved is how much money gets you to earn 23,800 rand. So this is the amount of money that's going to get you to that threshold of 23,800 rand. And above that, you will start paying tax. If you have your money in a savings account that pays you 11% annually, you need to save more than 216,363 and 64 cents for you to start paying tax on interest. If your savings account pays you 10% annually, you need to save more than 238,000 Rand for you to start paying interest tax. 
If your savings account pays you 9% annually in interest, you need to have saved more than 264,444 rand and 44 cents. If your account pays you 8% annually, you need to have saved more than 297,500 rand for you to start paying tax on interest. If your savings account pays you 7% annually, you need to have saved more than 340,000 rand for you to start paying tax on interest. If your account pays you 6% annually, you need to have saved more than 396,666 rand and 67 cents for you to start paying tax on your interest. I hope you get the idea. So can you see how much money you need to actually have saved for you to to start paying tax unless you have this much money in your normal savings account you are not going to pay taxes so there is no need to use your TFSA unnecessarily because your TFSA will never allow you to deposit this much money in one year anyway. You can only deposit a maximum of 36,000 rand in your TFSA. And if it's for short-term savings, you are wasting it. Because if you had put that money in a normal savings account, you were not going to pay tax anyway. Do you get it? Do you understand? Tax-free savings accounts are for long-term investing only. If you are still confused about how tax-free savings accounts work, you want to learn more, you can watch my other TFSA videos that are showing on your screen right now. If you want to start investing for the long term and you need guidance, you can buy copies of my ebooks to guide you step by step from my online store. My online store is talkingmoneywithnozi.com. I'm going to leave the link to my online store in the description below. Please remember to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye guys.